but wait, there's more. Yes, that was a Cybertruck pulling a Porsche 911, beating another Porsche 911 in a head-to-head -head race. Guys, there's been a lot of footage coming out about this Cybertruck, and I'll be honest, I'm excited. Disappointed that the stock has been going south while the excitement behind the Cybertruck has been steadily rising. And I've got some opinions about where I think it's going to go next. I'm going to break uh, those charts down for you here in a little bit. I've also got some commentary on Elon's recent interview that stirred quite a bit of reaction from a lot of people. But let's just get back to the Cybertruck for a minute. This thing can go from 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. That's incredibly fast. This is, in my view, a sports vehicle. If it can beat a Porsche in a head-to-head -head race, then it's a sports vehicle. And then they put it up against uh, some of the bigger pickup trucks, and yet again, it outperformed them as pickup trucks. So can a Tesla Cybertruck outpull an F-350 diesel? According to Tesla, it can. A video played during today's Cybertruck delivery event showed the electric pickup pulling the sled further than the F-150 Lightning, Rivian R1T, and finally an F-350 Super Duty diesel. And so I'm going to ask you guys this question, and then all of you are going to think I am way too excited about the Cybertruck. Is this not perhaps one of the very best vehicles that have ever been produced? It's, it's, it has amazing specs. So right now we have not been able to see its flaws there's a lot of people that never expected this truck to come to market, and even Elon has made a number of comments such as, we dug our own grave with the cyber truck. Yes, he actually said that. He put himself up against the wall trying to produce something that, that a lot of people believed couldn't be produced, yet here it is. It's outperforming a lot of other vehicles. I'm going to dive into that interview, and I'm going to cover a couple other big plays that I've got going on. We're going to talk today about Tesla, Baba. I'm going to give you a brief commentary on DraftKings, and then we're going to dive into Bitcoin, which is absolutely taking off. Now, do we know where Bitcoin's going? You know that I've been expecting that the top of the move could be 41 k but... We have just been steadily pushing up against 38, and today we've broken out, and now we're heading to 39. We don't know whether or not this thing is actually going to hit 41K. If it did, in my mind, that's going to be the brick wall where it's going to come to an end. But the way that we're going to know when the move is over is basically going to be on how hard of a flush rejection candle forms. A rejection candle is a tall wick candle. We don't have that right now. And so we're going to continue to believe that we're going to push higher. Resistance is 41. Now, I'm going to dive also into an altcoin, which is outperforming. It's, a, it's one of the large cap altcoins, and it's outperforming today. It's an outlier amongst a lot of the coins that we follow on this page that are moving higher. I'm going to dive in and give some fresh technicals on that one. This is the Stocks with Josh show. Thank you for hitting the like. Uh, hit the subscribe if you need help trading these choppy markets with stocks and crypto. You guys know I give bold predictions on this page, and then we track them and see how they turn out. All right, let me just quickly ask you guys a question. I shared with you how I felt about the Cybertruck. Is it too unconventional? Is it ugly to you? Or are you guys impressed? I'd love to hear from you your thoughts on the Cybertruck right now as far as it can be understood. We know that the price has gone up. Uh, Elon used to be talking in the 40K range, and now the price has been established at 61K, according to Wall Street Journal. And there are some upgrade models. There's actually a Cyber Truck and there's a Cyber Beast. The Cyber Beast is going to be priced around 100000 I've also begun to see a lot of add-on packages to this vehicle. I think this is going to be one of the most significant vehicles that's ever been made. And whether or not it, it turns out to be too expensive to make and whether or not the sales uh, fall off in the coming years, it's going to go down in history as one of the most unique productions of any vehicle ever made. That's my opinion, but I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think? So uh, here's what's been going on, and here's one reason why uh, why the stock's been going down. It's because Elon's been talking. His interview was very controversial, and he said a lot of things to attempt to temper
people's expectations. He warned that it would take about 18 months to see a significant cash flow contribution from the Cybertruck. What does that mean? It means they're going to be losing money, not making money. This is a very expensive vehicle to produce. And even though they're selling it at 61K, 61K does not, it's not going to be a true representation of what it costs to make each and every one of these. They're going to have to be bringing the cost down by raising the supply, and that's going to be further down the road. Right now, they're just trying to meet some of the initial demand. So they're going to be losing money, and that's going to put strain on the company. But if they this is a huge success, it absolutely is a reason why this stock can go higher in 2024 and 2025. He ultimately concluded that they were going to shoot to make 250,000 Cybertrucks by 2025. That to me was actually a small number. I was expecting a little bit more. It also could be another reason why the, some of the share value has been taken off the table by Wall Street. Now, another dynamic to this interview where it kind of went south was he was asked about Twitter. You know what? As a shareholder of Tesla, a long-term holder of Tesla, I would personally prefer Elon to not talk about X, formerly Twitter. There was some issue between conservative and liberal views, and he basically told all of his detractors to go F themselves. A very bold move. Now, I've talked about this with Elon before. He said that he said these guys attempted to use money to persuade me. And then he gave a real scoff and said, "Come on, Come on, guys. He's one of the richest men in the world. You're not going to move him or threaten him with money. He has what has been classically referred to as FU money. That's where Elon's coming from, and that's the attitude in which he's responding to his potential enemies in the marketplace. He doesn't care. The truth is that he's killing it with Twitter because he knows how to build successful businesses and put smart people into places of power. And Twitter is just becoming a leaner and more profitable business each and every day that he continues to run it. And I imagine one day it might go public. We'll see. I don't know. Apparently, some have identified that the big controversy was be between him and possibly Bob Iger from Disney. There's a bunch of... Uh, uh, Elon lovers who I guess canceled their Disney Plus subscriptions based on his comments in yesterday's video. I don't really know. Elon seems to be fighting everybody. He seems to pick a beef with a lot of people. On that note, uh, Disney has been coming back. I didn't intend to talk about them, but since I commented on Bob Iger, I will simply add that I see weakness in the Disney stock and potentially an opportunity to do puts down to $89. Uh, at the moment, that would make sense. It's had an incredible move up from its lows. It would be reasonable for it to digest a little bit before going higher. And so right now, I do see a pullback on Disney to at least the $89 range where I see some more support. All right, let's talk about the Tesla chart. Now, I don't have great guidance to give you guys today on Tesla. Te and that's because Tesla is not being clear in the charts. It's sort of fallen into a middle zone between a recent high and a strategic low. That high is the 252 range, the low is the gap down to around 224, possibly even as low as 210. Right now, it came down. We knew that 233 was a significant support zone. It came down and today it's bounced off of that. Now, up above it, for me to get bullish again, it's got to get above $242 with volume. Now, from a technical perspective only, the only real resistance level above it right now is 255 and so it could easily do that. Now, if we fall back beneath 233 and we lose that a second time here in a row, I think that's going to be strong confirmation that this is going to have to go back and test and make a swing low, possibly that 224. We'll have to see how that holds, maybe even after hours pre-market as low as 210 before going higher. I largely see that Tesla's gonna move sideways, and I think we did hit my target of 252. At this moment, it would not shock me if we don't immediately begin to climb or immediately begin to fall, more than likely, we will end December around $233. That's kind of what I'm expecting right now with Tesla. I also want to say Tesla is very choppy right now. Uh, you can get eaten up pretty badly holding calls or puts overnight. They can lose 50% value. I bought a couple calls yesterday. They lost 50% value in the morning. I was able to add to my position, buy on the strategic support for a bump up. I was able to recover from that, but at this moment, I am not going to be holding any options overnight 
until I begin to see some direction form in this. And I would warn if you are not an experienced trader, if you're under the PDT restriction, which is pattern day trader restriction, if you have less than $25,000 in your account, don't attempt to master Tesla options. If I do a trade alert on Tesla and you are under that PDT restriction, I can go in and out 10 times in a day. Don't follow me if you are not in that exact same position to be able to do that. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of warning on that. All right, let's dive into Alibaba. I did do a trade alert on Baba. I was able to ride down puts after the earnings did not go well. We had a drop in the value of the calls that I had made for earnings, hoping that we would get a bounce from that. And I entered into puts the following day. I think it was actually two days later. On those puts, from then until now, I was able to realize a 300% profit. Now, here's what I want you guys to follow. It, I called, I made a call for calls, and the option that I was looking at was for March of 2024. And it went up, and that made a few dollars for me, but I decided to exit that position and continue to go with the trend down. I spent some more time on the charts, and I think that because we broke down beneath that $75 critical level of support. 73, I was expecting a touch, and if we got an incredible green candle pushing us back above 75 or $76 today, then I would have been bullish going for calls back up from this level. But I didn't see any volume come in at that $73 to justify going long on calls. And so when it's run up, I'm gonna enter back into puts to ride it back down further, and the target that I've got to the downside on Alibaba is down to $65. Now, simultaneously, I'm doing a daily share buy in my long-term portfolio. So I'm buying the shares as we go down day after day, and I'm holding puts as a hedge. So at some point, I'm gonna turn around and add calls, and all of the money that I'm making trading the options, I'm going to put that into BABA shares. So hopefully I will cash out my BABA puts in a huge profit and I will buy BABA shares at $65 and hold those long into 2024. That's my current game plan with BABA. All right, let me just take a very quick station break. If you're a new investor and you need better trade tools, go and click on the link in the top pin comment and check out the trading platform called Moomoo. They are a zero cost to trade platform and they're giving away up to 15 free stock. And for any cash that you leave sitting in your account, you can get up to a 5.1% interest rate. And so it's a pretty good offer. It's available in the US, Australia, and Canada, but the offer is different for all three places. Click on the link to check out the offer that's available for you. There's also a link there for the Webull app for the US market and the UK market. You can check that out and see their offer as well. All right, let's dive into APLD. APLD had a change of character. I made a trade alert on it and it's absolutely taken off over the last 24 hours. It's had a nice and beautiful run up. The trade alert was pretty well timed. I saw a lot of people telling me in the Discord that they were that they had made hundreds and even thousands of dollars. If you do not know what the Discord is, check it out. There's a link in the top pinned comment for the Stock Squad. That's where I do trade alerts, technicals, and communicate more often with the fam. Okay, a where is APLD going now? Well, here's what's happened. APLD did hit a light resistance at $5.05. .05. Now that's more of a four hour resistance on the chart. But if we look at a longer time frame, we look at the daily chart, the resistance that's above is at $5.49. Now I'm personally going to hold my shares and might even add to them if it pulls back because I believe that we're going to at least hit $5.49 on APLD. My stop loss is set pretty low, pretty conservatively at $4.00. 44 cents. And so even if we come back to my entry, I'm just going to load up some more because I do believe that right now APLD is going to go on to test its local high, which as for me, a minimum of around that $5.50 range, possibly higher. I don't want to cut my winner too soon. That's what I'm doing with APLD. All right. I also wanted to give you a little commentary on DraftKings today. It's moving sideways beneath a very critical area of resistance at $38.60. And so when you see stock price move sideways in a very tight range, that's referred to as price compression. It often signals a breakout move either to the upside or to the downside, which means that this can go either way. Now, 
because 3860 has been such a critical area of resistance, if we were to break above it and close, it could actually open up a window for DraftKings to go significantly higher upwards to 55% higher. Now my up targets for DraftKing, if we get that confirmation, is $44 and then $58. Now we don't have that confirmation just yet, and so for me, it would be too early to enter into calls. I'm also looking for a downside move because like I said, that price compression is signaling that a big move is coming. It could be up or down. If we were to go down, I'd be watching for a close beneath $36.70 for a move down to $32, but keep your eye on DraftKings because something very interesting is setting up there. If you take a broader look at the chart, you actually see that it's been a cup and a handle move, and so if we get that confirmation above that $38.60, then it could be for a much bigger bullish continuation, like I said even as high as 58 bucks. So keep your eye on DraftKings. You'll get more technical updates and charts on DraftKings over in the Discord. All right, I'm gonna do a brief comment on TOI, ticker T-O-I. That's a penny stock that I made a couple pennies on, I think last week. It was coming back to a key area of support. I predicted that we would hit $1.80. We did, we had a nice jump back up above $2. But since it faded my stop loss, which I use on every order, kicked me out for a small profit. And here's what I'm trying to tell you. I've been asked about toy in the Discord and in the comments section probably about 10 times. I'm not in it. It's not a buy right now. There's a sell signal on it. And support is at $1.52. And so I will consider re-entering toy once it gets back to $1.52, but don't hold it and then ask me about it later because I've been saying repeatedly in the comment section, toy, I'm done with it for now. It's not popping, it's pulling back. All right. Okay, let's get into crypto. The crypto heat map looks beautiful. It's green from head to toe, a beautiful day. On Bitcoin, like I said, we pushed up over 38. Here's what we need to do. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you kind of know what we're looking for. We're looking for the candle to close today above 38, and then we want another candle to open above 38 tomorrow and close above 38 tomorrow. And then we're going to be looking at the fact that we might have confirmation for this thing to go up to the 41K that I think is possible. But if we see a capitulation move, a real strong move, back beneath 38 and then it continues lower, then that's gonna give us the negative bearish wick that would tell us that the run-up is over. So, is there a ton of money to be made in Mara and Riot and Clean Spark and Hut 8 and Hive right now? If Bitcoin continues to climb, yes, these things can pop higher. But because they've been successful trades, everybody should consider raising their stop loss up so they can lock in some money if for some reason Bitcoin doesn't do what we're hoping and expecting it to do. You guys know the markets will fake us out. Right now, I'm still expecting Bitcoin to climb. 41 is my resistance level, and that's where I would lock in profits and not be greedy and hold longer. But there's an outlier on the crypto heat map that's worth talking about today. I haven't talked about it in a while, and you're going to find that I'm going to be covering cryptos more and more as things have started to pop. It's worthwhile to take a look at these charts. And what we're going to be looking at today is Polygon Matic. Yes, I have not lost any love for Polygon Matic. Polygon Matic is up near 5% today, and it's the best outlier of the day. Now, it ran up, and it got rejected at an area of resistance at 93 cents here just recently. But the true area of resistance above is not that 93 cents. That's just an early spot of resistance. The true area that I'm thinking this is going to move up to is $1.16. That's what I'm expecting for us to do. I'm expecting a move up to $1.16 right now on Polygon Matic. And if we were to break through $1.16 in the coming days, then I think this thing absolutely can move up to $1.65. Now, here's one of the things I wanted to share with you. It's a psychological view. When you're in the winter, you get used to things moving up and then falling lower, moving up and then following lower moving up and then following lower. But then we get what's that change of character when things begin to move up and you start thinking, well, I'll get it when it falls lower, but it fails to fall lower. It just begins to do stair steps up. And that's what I want you guys to consider when looking at Polygon Matic today. Because 77 cents, the area where it just came a nice 
off a nice bounce up to is a pretty critical area of support. So that's the line in the sand I want you to follow, right around that 74 to 77 cent range. If we stay above it, then we absolutely could have an additional near 100% jump from here all the way back up to $1.65 or $1.75 is absolutely possible on Polygon Matic. So the critical line is if you fall beneath 74 cents, then we're going to retest some of the lows. But if we stay above 74, 77 cents, then we're going to be looking at a lot more attempts to push higher up to 116 and eventually up to 165. Guys, mark it on your chart. Uh, that's the critical line in the sand for Polygon Matic, and it's starting to wake up along with all the other cryptos and altcoins and the minor stocks. Things are looking pretty good over there today. Let me know if you guys are in Polygon Matic, what you think about it. Will you take any profit? You know I'm not going to take any profit. All I'm doing with with these right now is buying more. I've not been incentivized to sell any because I don't want to try to guess the, the bottom or the top right now. Ultimately, we're going to get closer to 2024 and these things are going to rip up. In the crypto winter, you buy. I'm not going to sell until the end of 2024. That's when I expect things to be way higher from here, and I'm looking for a bigger bag, a bigger gain on my crypto. Let me know what you guys are doing with your crypto. There's nothing wrong with swing trading. I do do some swing trading. I'm not in any crypto swing trade today. I do have crypto bots that run constantly and make me like 25 cent per trade. I do that over on three commas. I haven't talked about it much, but that's been profitable for me. Uh, guys, that's about it for today. That's all I've got for you. Looking forward to meeting folks out in LA. Guys, have a great day. Let me say hi in the comments section. Hit subscribe if you want an update on these trades we talked about today. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye.